all right guys welcome back to another raid shadow legends video this alley plays and uh yeah we just got double chance so we got double chance on voice shards for epics and legendaries friday september 6th to monday september 9th uh, they're going to be doubling it and yeah so don't miss out on your best chance so unfortunately uh a lot of people in my guild <laughs> summoned already let's see what the chances are right now so 16 percent chance for an epic champion and 1% chance for a legendary. 1% is way too low though. But it's a good chance to get uh, some void epics. And who knows, you might get lucky and get a legendary champion. And also, we got new uh, dwarf. I don't know why they said we have a surprise for you. Uh, Cerulea said that. Like they told us there's going to be dwarves. And uh, yeah, here they are. So we got one legendary dwarf. She looks pretty. She looks like really cool. She has a crazy hammer that has like lightning on it. And uh, yeah, she has four abilities. One of them passive and she also has an aura skill. Uh, she's an attack type legendary. Uh, she's got 1600 attack, that's a lot. With 100 base speed, that's very good. So she has a double hit on her basic attack, golden mallet. And it has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn after the second hit. And then that 50% can be a 60% if you uh, book her. She looks like she can do a lot of damage, just like uh, Mountain King, but Mountain King's not that good. Uh, she has an ability, Cloak of Ages. She attacks one enemy, then attacks all other enemies with a second hit, dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. I actually like this ability right here. This reminds me of uh, the big gun ability. So she basically has an AOE on her A2. Uh, too bad there's no too bad there's no cooldown reduction on it if you uh, book it. So it looks like you don't really need to book her abilities. I mean, the only thing you're getting is more damage, and then it looks like just a buff debuff chance here. Here is just damage. I know damage is good. But there's other champions that require uh, books that are a higher priority. Uh, A3 Forge Rhythm. She has an AoE that has a 70% chance of placing a stunny buff for one turn. Uh, this actually looks very powerful for Spider's Den. I mean, again, unfortunately, there's no cooldown reduction here. Uh, it should be able to be a four turn cooldown when upgraded. And she has an HP burn debuff for two turns on enemies under stun. And she plays an extra hit on enemies not under stun debuffs. So yeah, she looks like a very powerful champion for Spider's Den. And uh, Swift Justice. This champion's resistance increases by 10 for each stun debuff this champion places on enemies. So yeah, look at, think about it, Spider's Den. Stats across each round in the battle up to 100. This champion's speed increases by 5 for each enemy currently under an HP burn debuff. Only counts active HP burn debuffs. Stacks up to 15, so she basically can increase her uh, speed by 15. So she can have 115 base speed uh, without artifacts. So she looks really good. Aura skill increased magic ally attack and all battles by 36%. I don't like this. Um, I don't like force affinity specific aura skills. But yeah, I guess they don't really want to make her too OP. But well, they gotta make give some dwarf some love. So another new one is uh, rear guard sergeant. She's epic defense based, so she's gonna be yeah she's dealing damage based on defense, uh, which is good. Or A1, she attacks an enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense debuff for two turns. I wish this was decrease attack, but that's okay. Flail Master attacks all enemies, and then she can place decrease attack on all that. Oh, that's actually better, never mind. I uh, forget what I said in the first one. A uh, mass decrease attack is better than uh, decrease defense. And she heals the champion by 25% of the damage inflicted. That's actually very good. Because her damage is based on defense, she's going to be very tanky and then she can sustain herself without even having lifesteal pieces. And it's a 4 turn cooldown, we we'll upgrade it as 3 turns, so this is a very very good move. And then the debuff, debuff chance is going to be a 75% chance of placing it, that's, that's really good. So hopefully I can pull this champion. And she has ally protection and a continuous heal buff on all allies except herself for 2 turns. Which is on a three turn cooldown when maxed out. So she's she looks like she's worth booking. Uh, just for her A2 and her A3. And then she increases force ally HP and all battles by 33%. Again, I don't like affinity specific uh, aura skills, but it's okay. Uh, we have uh, Beardall Fellhammer. This guy looks pretty cool. So yeah, you can tell he has heal reduction, double hit heal reduction. Um, A3 is a triple hit. That places shield buff on himself equal to 30% of the damage inflicted for 3 turns. On a 3 turn cooldown when maxed out. What I'm wondering is, will this work with with uh, tier 6 masteries like uh, War Master or Giant Slayer? Because if it did, that would be crazy. 
Uh, Paranoia, he plays a counterattack buff on himself for one turn at the start of each round. And uh, plays a counterattack buff on this champion for one turn at the end of their turn. This could potentially be really good, man. If he had weaken on his basic attack, man, <laughs> that would be crazy. He has counterattack weaken and he has uh, this ability right here. And he's an attack type champion, so he's, he's going to be uh, putting a sh big shield on himself. Increase ally attack and damage by 32%. All right, let's move on. So we have Runic Warder, so we're on to the rares now. He's an HP type, he has a double hit on his basic, that's pretty basic. He's A2, superior steel, attacks enemy two times. HA has a 30% chance of placing a decrease attack debuff for two turns. And that's on a three turn cooldown and you can't uh, decrease it. So that's unfortunate, but three turns is pretty good. Uh, he has reflect damage and continuous heal buff and allies for two turns. So I guess he's like mediocre to me. Like this, this ability is pretty good, but the rest of his abilities are mediocre to me. Uh, he has high base speed though. Uh, Stout Axeman. He is new, he's HP base. Basic attack is just basic. Uh, Repel the Horde. He plays a 15% reflect damage buff on himself for two turns. And then he has 85% chance of placing reflect damage buff on a random ally for two turns. And he also has a 35% chance of placing provoke debuff on two random enemies for one turn. And then his passive ability thrives on danger, heals this champion by 50% of the damage taken while under a reflect damage buff. Well, that's actually good. Also has a 25% chance of increasing the duration of all attackers debuff on one turn one hit while under reflect damage buff. So yeah, he's okay. So where are we at now? We have Madman. Look at that hairstyle. Uh, basic attack. While slashing attacks one enemy, it has a 50% chance of attacking all other enemies with a second hit. Dealing 30% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. I like this ability. I don't know how much damage he's going to be doing, but uh, it looks pretty good. Another AoE. Heals the champion by 10% of the damage inflicted. The champion's current HP is below 50%. Can be on a 3 turn cooldown, so that's pretty solid. This guy's solid. Attacks one enemy with crazed lunge. Uh, will ignore 30% of the target's defense. Ignores block damage to shield buffs. Yeah, so this guy is pretty solid for a rare champion. Uh, I would actually work on this guy if I get him. Look at this tattoo, man. And we got another champion to join Bulwark. For the Void Rares. We have uh, Pain Smith. So his A1 is a basic attack. A2, Utter Destruction. He attacks one enemy. Enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived. So yeah, that's uh, pretty good for the uh, Ice Golem. Plays a block debuff buff on the champion for two turns if the attack kills an enemy. That can be on a 3 turn cooldown. Helpless Victim, he attacks one enemy, damage increases by 15% of the target, has no active buffs. On a 4 turn cooldown, and then his uh, aura skill increases ally attack and damage by 21%. So yeah, but Bulwark's still better. Uh, Chemist. This guy looks interesting. He's got like braids on his beard. I like his uh, weapons. So Chemist, double hit on his basic. Uh, he has a stun on his A2. So yeah, he's not that good. He's an uncommon type. Uh, there was one that was very good uncommon. I think it was Tunnel, Tunnel Steward. So Tunnel Steward's uh, basic attack has a 25% chance of placing a 2.5% poison debuff for two turns. It's only on one hit, and then if you upgrade it, it's going to be a 35% chance. And then his A2 attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of increasing the duration of two random debuffs on the target by one turn. And that can be on a three turn cooldown. So this guy can potentially uh, be one of those uh, hidden gems for clan boss. So he would definitely be on my list. Top 10 uncommon champions for clan boss. Because of his poison ability and his uh, increased duration of debuffs on the target by one turn. So don't sleep on this guy. Tunnel Steward. Yeah, so that's it for the uh, new champions, guys. Let me know what you guys think about them in the comment section. And if you guys uh, found this video helpful or entertaining, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon to let YouTube know you want to stay up to date on all my latest content. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.